Hello, hello, hello. Yeah, guys, if you've ever left California and gone further east beyond the mountains, if you've ever left the LA area, you'll notice as soon as you get past the mountains, it goes from being very green out here to being very dry out as you go off Palm Springs on into Arizona and Nevada. And why is that? Well, it has to do with two concepts I would like to bring up. There is something called humidity, which is how much water is in the air, and then there's something called rel relative humidity, which is how full the air is with water. So we have this air coming in from the ocean, and it's got to rise up over those mountains. And as it does so, something starts to happen to it. And we will start out with one thing. So humidity is how much water is in the air. Relative humidity is, the, is how full the, the air is. So imagine this is warm air. It holds more water. It's got a certain amount of water, and it's about halfway full. So we say this is 50% relative humidity. If the air gets colder, the amount of water in it is the same, but it's more full. The cold air can't hold as much water, so this is maybe 80% full, 80% relative humidity. 50% relative humidity, 80% relative humidity. Notice the total amount of water, the total humidity has not changed, it's the relative humidity, how full the air is with water. So, you start out with water, the air that's not too wet, and it comes in and it starts going up the mountain. It starts going over the mountains. Now, as you go up a mountain, you may notice it gets colder. And as it gets colder, the air's ability to hold water decreases. And eventually, it's like getting smaller and smaller glasses, as it gets higher, something starts to happen. Well, what's happening here? Well, you may notice that the beakers are no longer big enough to hold the water. And the same thing happens with the air as it gets colder. As it gets colder, it can hold less water, and it gets to 100%. Now, at 100% relative humidity, the air is completely full, and it cannot hold any more. So if it keeps getting colder, it's going to have to drop that water. And that's just basically happening over the mountains. As it goes over the mountains, it drops rain. If it gets cold enough, it'll even come down to snow because the air cannot hold that water anymore. Now, once it gets to the top, it starts coming back down the other side. When it comes back down the other side, something else happens. The air gets warmer. So that water, you know, there's the tiny amount of water which is still in the air when it, it reaches the highest point of the mountain. As it goes down, the air gets warmer. It can hold more water. But you notice something, as the air gets warmer and warmer and warmer, this, it has the same amount of water that we had at the top of the mountain. And at the top of the mountain, it was completely saturated, completely full. But now that the air is warmer, it's drier. So we're back, back where we started, same temperature, but there's a lot less water in that air. And believe me, that air flowing over Arizona and Nevada isn't going to drop much of anything at all. And that's why once you get past those mountains, it's dry. Reason why? Until you go back up the Rockies and it starts getting cold again, or if you go north, it's gonna get nowhere close to 100% humidity. So you're not gonna see much in the way of rain or precipitation. But I just thought I'd show you, by the way, this phenomenon is known as the rain shadow effect because, you know, the mount mountain's like a big squeegee taking the water out of the air. But now you know, rain, rain shadow, that's pretty much what it is. I hope you've enjoyed this video, and I look forward to seeing you again sometime soon. Goodbye.